All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Um, today we're going to talk about how to upload something or prompt a user to pick a file to upload. Uh, in WPF, if you're new to this channel, uh, I make videos on different things that I find out how to do in programming um, and tips and tricks and that kind of stuff. So if you like these kind of videos to always enhance your skill set, uh, that's, that's pretty much what this is about. So feel free to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But anyway, let's get into uh, the video. So um, the whole goal of this video is to have a button, something like browse uh, or upload, and then we prompt the user to pick a file and then we get the location of that file. Um, and then this will probably be a two-part series and then in the next video I will go ahead and, and talk about what I would do uh, to temporarily store that file and, and kind of use that file. Um, so the first video here I guess we're just going to talk about prompting the user to uh, pick a file to be uploaded uh, because I have a project that I've been working on for this channel and it's going to be a, uh, a WPF console application that hopefully you guys can follow along and build along with me and you can have something for your portfolio you can have something to show off to uh, others All right. even if it's not for your portfolio just something to, to show for the work that you put in it's pretty neat that's what's cool about programming um, you work on something but you actually get to show it off too so anyway, uh, let's go ahead and let's start by creating a button. And we're just going to end it here and let's name it something. So let's name it uh, upload button. You can name it whatever you like if you're following along. Um, content, we're just going to say upload or maybe um, choose a file to upload. Uh, I'm just going to hit save and let's see what else do we need we need an event so we have this button we can make it smaller so it's not taking up the entirety of um, you know of the width but I'm just gonna keep it like it is and let's go ahead and have a click event so let's go click and then double click this new event handler now go ahead and create an upload button uh, click event and it gets that from the name that we gave it. So that's what's cool. Let's go ahead and save and then it'll automatically um, format it with the extension that I have. Um, if you're interested in this extension, let's go ahead. I don't think I ever mentioned it before. I don't even remember what it's called. Uh, I think it's under install live share. No, that's not it. Um, what is it called? Oh, SAML Styler. It's really nice. Every time after you save it, it formats it like this. Um, so it makes it really nice. So we we save this. So we have everything in the front end that we need. Now we just need to work on the back end. Um, getting a, a prompt to come up and ask the user to choose, um, choose a file. So now we have this new event that was populated after we created the click upload button click event. Uh, so let's go ahead and start writing some code. So I have um, I have a Google search pulled up in my other monitor because this is something I would never remember, and that's what's great about you know programming is you're not really destined to remember everything that you do. You you can remember the concepts, that's one thing, but remembering the syntax and everything, especially when you're juggling multiple programming languages, that's near impossible unless you have like a uh, photographic memory. Um, but the power of Google, as long as you know how to ask a question, you can you can guarantee or almost guarantee to get any question answered. So um, the the only thing I think that we may need is this using system windows. Uh, I'm not entirely certain, but we'll find out um, what else gets used if anything once we write the code. And anything that lights up white and isn't grayed like this means that it's actually in use. So you see anything in gray, uh, it's not actually being used. So this is all kind of, I, I would say, useless right now. Um, but we'll see if this uses anything else. But right now, um, the only thing we're using right now is system.windows. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create an object uh, that's going to prompt the user to um, pick a file. Let me get a drink of my coffee here. 
And the object that we want, if I can type, it's Microsoft dot Win32. So we'll click that dot uh, file. I think it's open. Oh, open file dialog. And that's all. And then we're going to head and name it something, our object something. So it automatically suggests this name, uh, open file dot dialog with a lowercase o at the beginning. So I'll just use that. Uh, if you want to name it something else, like file browser or something like that, feel free to do so. Um, equals new, and then open file dialog. Perfect. So that's our object. We just created a new. Uh, open file dialog fo object called open file dialog. Now we're going to use this object to um, prompt the user to pick a file. So we need to go ahead and display the prompt. So we have our object. Now we need to get the thing that pops up, right? The the file explorer. Um, and the thing about this is when we call this this show prompt. Um, it actually returns a, a, a boolean. Um, but it's not just any boolean, it's a nullable value. So uh, there are things called nullable types in C Sharp, and really it's just um, any other type except it has now the option to become null. So if we have an integer, um, if we had int i equals null, that would give us something, that would give us a red squiggly. So let's do that. Int int i is equal to null. And you can see it's going to give us an error. It's going to say cannot convert null to int because it is a non-nullable value type. And so in order to fix this, we actually, uh, between the int, the type, I guess, not just int, but the type and the name that we give it, we put a uh, question mark. That is the shorthand. And if you don't want to use the shorthand, you can actually do nullable and then in these uh, square bracket, not square brackets, these angle brackets, um, we type in, I must have hit cap lock, we type in the type. Um, so that's one way to do it. We can do nullable and then these uh, angle brackets and then, or less than, greater than, and then the type. Um, but me, I prefer to just use uh, the question mark because it's shorter and as long as you know what it means, maybe it's not as explicit when other people are reading it, but personally, I enjoy using the uh, question mark better. But you can use whatever you want. What I, what I, where I was going with that is when we called the display dialog or show dialog um, function from this object, uh, it actually returns a nullable type boolean to kind of confirm that it did uh, show the prompt. So let's go ahead and create a boolean but it's going to be nullable because let me just show you response is equal to open file dialog dot show dialog. So notice that when I do this, uh, it's going to give me an error. It's going to say cannot convert type nullable bool to bool. Um, so we got to make this a nullable type and to do so we just put in the question mark just like it kind of showed us in that and that error. So it's pretty nifty. Um, so now, so what this is doing is saying, okay, did it actually show the dialog? This is what it's returning. Did it open up the dialog for the user to uh, pick something? So if uh, it did, if the response is true, so equals equals true, let's go ahead and do something. Let's go ahead and grab whatever it is that they choose. So let's create a string and let's call this file name or file location, whatever you're, or file, let's do file path. That makes more sense. Is equal to uh, open file dialog dot file name. And then let's go ahead and create or show this in a message box. Message box dot show. And then what we're going to show is the file path. File, if I can type file path. Perfect. So once again, what it's doing, we created a file dialog object. That's what's going to prompt the user to pick. Um, once the user picks and uh, 
it shows this dialog, um, it's going to return true. And if it's true, we're going to take the file name that they gave us from the file they chose, and then we're going to display it on the screen just to kind of verify that it looks good. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay, so we're going to choose a file to upload. Um, let's go ahead and click this button that we created. And now I have a lot of different PDFs. Let's do this Robinhood. This is a uh, brokerage PDF, um, the Robinhood uh, stock brokerage app. Let's go ahead and click this and then click open. So you can see it's in this PC desktop tax forms 2019. And this gives us the whole path of the file that we just chose. It's in the C drive, users, Brandon, which is me, uh, desktop, and then tax forms 2019 directory, and then inside of that, the robinhood.pdf. That gave us the whole path, and it shows uh, that file path was equal to that whole string that we just saw. So in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and create a temporary uh, directory, and we're going to store the file that the user chose, and then we can kind of manipulate that as we will, and then delete it when we're done uh, using it. So thanks for watching this part one. Hopefully you found it uh, useful, and I think it's a really cool, um, you know, a really cool thing to to use. Uh, it'll probably come in handy with a few apps that you may choose to uh, choose to create. Like if you have a CSV uh, file that you're going to have the user create and enter some values and then you want to read from that file this can be one way that um, you get that file from the user the user can store it anywhere that he or she wants on their computer and you can now uh, ask for that file they give it to you and then you go ahead and, and and parse through that file and get the data that you need so thanks for watching the video guys appreciate appreciate you that's a uh, funny word, I suppose. And I will see you in the next one.